Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and we are in the part 8 of functional programming. In the previous video, we have seen that the stream pipeline consists of a source, it could have intermediate operations and it will consist of a terminal operation. In this video, we will concentrate on how to create source of stream in programming. So I'm going to create a empty class with the main method and in here I will write the code that would create the stream. As you would expect, there are multiple ways how a stream could be created and we will discuss here the more important ones that you need to know for the exam. Let me first write down a statement and then we will discuss it in detail. So in this case, I'm creating a stream that has only one object and that object is Java. The way I have created this is I have used the off method which is present on the stream class and since it is a static type, I can use the class name to use the off method. And as you notice, the stream class is present in java.util.stream package. All the stream related classes will be present in that package. And also in my case, I have assigned the stream to a variable called s1, which is of the type stream, which is generically defined of the type string. Now, wherever I need the stream, I can use the variable s1. In this case, we have created a stream only with one object. Let's see how can we create a stream with a multiple objects. So for that, again, I'm going to use the method of. And the reason I'm able to use that method of is that the parameter of that method is a variable argument, which means we can pass in zero or more than zero arguments to that method. Since the stream that I have created is a stream of integers, the variable s2 will be of the type stream integer. Next up, let's see how we can create the empty stream. Empty stream means it is a stream that does not have any objects in it. The way we can do it is to use the empty static method on the stream object. You might have a question that why would we need a stream that is empty? The answer is that there are some use cases where we do want empty stream. For example, let's say you're calling an API that is written by someone else. And the way that API is written, it doesn't handle the null references in a graceful way, which means if you pass a null instead of an empty stream, the API might throw null pointer exception. And since it's an API, you may or may not be able to modify it. So instead of either you catch the null pointer exception in your code or just pass the empty stream so that the API has what it needs. And similarly, let's say you are writing an API that returns back a stream from the API and you do not want to pass back null because the calling code might not be handling the null properly. So it's better to pass an empty stream. So far, the data that is in the stream, we have been coding it manually when declaring a stream. But there is a way where a stream can be created by using the data that is present in the Java collections. Let's see an example of how to create a stream from a list. So for that, I'm going to first create a list of strings and add two strings to that list. And now I'll convert this list into a stream. And the way to do that is to call the stream method on the list. And now we have a stream of two objects and those two objects are coming from the list. Similarly, you can create the stream from other similar collections in Java by simply calling the stream method. So far, we have created only finite stream. Whatever we can do with these streams, we can always do that using the collections. We could use a for loop and just iterate through. However, the real power of the stream comes through that we can have an infinite stream. And you already know that we cannot have an infinite collection. Now, let's see two ways in which we can create the infinite stream. The first infinite stream that I'm going to create is to create the infinite number of random numbers. And for that, I'm going to use the method called generate on the stream class. Again, this is a static method. The generate method takes a supplier as input. A supplier is a lambda, 
that doesn't have any inputs but it provides a value and to provide that value we will use the random method on math class as with any other lambda i can convert this lambda into a method reference if you are not aware what method reference is please watch the method reference video that i have already prepared because it's very important to understand not only for the exam but also to understand the other examples uh, that you see during your learning now this stream that i have created it is going to generate a random number and it's going to generate for infinite number of times i can't run the program now because as you would recall from the previous part that stream wouldn't generate the data until a terminal operation is present and we don't have a terminal operation yet we will see that in the next video but for now just know that the stream that i have created it is going to create the numbers forever other way to create an infinite stream of data is using the iterate method the iterate method comes in two flavors and we will see both of them here in the first flavor the way iterate will work is it takes two arguments the very first one is the seed element from where the stream will start the second argument is a function that will generate the next element the way it will work is the first argument will become the first element of the stream the second element of the stream is calculated using that function we provide and the third element of the stream will use the second element and the function that we provide to create the third element so similarly the fourth element will be created by using the function and the third element and so on and hence an infinite list of numbers will be provided now let's say we have to create a infinite odd numbers so we will start with one and we will give a function that will get us to the next odd number and the way we will do it is provide a lambda where the input will be n and then we will add 2 to that number so that we get to the next odd number and now when this stream starts producing the data it's going to provide you infinite odd numbers the other flavor of iterate is the one which takes a predicate and the stream is going to produce the elements until that predicate is true as soon as that predicate becomes false and then the stream stops generating the elements so essentially if we want a finite number of odd numbers for example say i want the odd numbers only from 1 until 100 then we could provide a predicate that will check whether the number has been less than 100 or not and the way we will write the iterate is we'll still start from 1 and now we will get the predicate in this case the predicate is n is less than 100 and then n is n plus 2 so effectively we start from 1 keep on going generating the next number using the unary operator and it will only generate until the predicate is true one thing i would like to highlight here is that the syntax of this method call looks very similar to a for loop where we initialize a value we increment the value and we increment it until the conditions become false so just watch out that when you see such uh, expression in the exam make sure the syntax is correct so in the for loop it uses semicolon but in here we use a comma because these are the three different arguments we are passing into the iterate method so just something to be aware of that is all i wanted to discuss in this video if you like the video hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for the upcoming videos until next time bye bye